Welcome back. In the last video and we did uh, some problems, in fact we had several problem sessions in the last few videos and before that we proved the main theorem of Galois theory which was uh, proved after developing the basic notions in Galois theory and proving some preliminary results. So we are now in the final stretch of the course and our goal now is to prove the famous uh, insolvability of quintics by radicals which was the original motivation for Galois. So I want to head towards that but on the way we want to discuss a couple of interesting topics which are interesting in their own right and also they are critical for our uh, study of polynomial equations and solving by radicals. And the first topic which I will start today is about something called Kummer extensions. <coughs> so these are very interesting extensions that will play a role in uh, later when we look at solving polynomials by radicals. Okay, so let us uh, set up the uh, notation for this. So let n be a positive integer. Okay. So I am going to now work with fields which have a certain property. Now I am not interested in all fields. So let f be a field such that either characteristic of a f is 0 in which case we have no further condition or characteristic of f is greater than 0 uh, let us say p then of course p is a prime number <coughs> in which case we want p not to divide n. Okay. So we do allow positive characteristic fields but then we do not want the characteristic to divide n. So, we will fix such a field. So, let me uh, quickly define what is a primitive nth root of unity. I, I have been using that phrase repeatedly in the course and we will in fact study them in more detail in the next topic. But for now let me just say that uh, an element zeta in an extension field of f is called a primitive nth root of unity. So, we will study this in more detail in a couple of videos, but for me now I will just define in the following way. This is one of the equivalent definitions. So, a primitive nth root of unity is 1 which is of course a nth root of unity. Um, if zeta power n is 1 of course and no smaller power is 1 for any uh, i you take any positive integer strictly less than n zeta i is not equal to 1. So, this is the n is the first power of zeta which becomes 1. So, as an example F a primitive first root of unity is 1, right. So, primitive first root of unity is 1 in any field that will exist. So, here remember I, I said in an extension k over f because f itself may not contain it, but an extension field will contain it. So, I, I wanted to be precise and say that it is in an extension of f. Uh, what are primitive? second root of unity. Okay. So, this of course is there is only one such minus 1. Okay. So, because there are two, so second root is just another word for square roots. There are two square roots, potentially two square roots, 1 minus 1. And of course, these will be different if the characteristic does not divide 2 which I am assuming. So, the point is every time I talk about primitive nth root of unity, I assume the characteristic is not divisible by p. So, just to emphasize this further, when we talk about primitive nth root of unity in a field K, we assume 
case satisfies one of these two conditions. Right? So, either characteristic k is 0 or n is not divisible by the characteristic of k. So, this is uh, a standing assumption I am going to make. Okay? Now, there are two square roots in once you assume that of uh, 1 and only one of them is primitive. So, this is primitive, this is not primitive because 1 is actually a first root of unity and so on. So, now you, you know what primitive cube roots of unity for example, in C are primitive cube root or third root of unity in C are omega and omega square. There are three cube roots of unity, one omega, omega square out of which only two are primitive. What about primitive cube root of in um, unity in F7? So, these I claim are 2 and 4. This came up in uh, an earlier video. So, 2 cubed is 7 which is 1 mod 7, right? Similarly, 4 cubed is uh, 64 which is also 1 mod 7. So, F7 has 3 roots of unity 1, 2 and 4 only 2 of them are primitive. Okay? So, this is a primitive cube root of uh, primitive nth root of unity. Of course, a given field may not contain it. For example, rational numbers do not contain primitive cube roots of unity, real numbers do not contain primitive cube roots of unity. Okay? Now, let us define the notion of a Kummer extension. Okay? Let F be a field containing a primitive nth root of unity. So, I, I will not repeat this all the time, but there is a standing assumption here. So, this is a standing assumption. which is to say that every time you talk about a field containing a primitive nth root of unity, its characteristic is either 0 or its characteristic does not divide n. Okay? So, in fact, you can argue that if you properly rigorously define primitive nth root of unity, a field containing a primitive nth root of unity must have this property, but for now I do not want to get into that. So, I will make that an assumption. So, note f satisfies <coughs> As I said, I will talk about primitive nth roots of unity later. This is one way to define it. Another way is that the set of nth roots of unity in a field form a cyclic subgroup of the multiplicative group of non-zero elements of that field and primitive nth roots of unity are generators of that group. Okay? So, I will come back to that in the, in the lectures when we talk about cyclotomic fields. Okay, now, let us get back to the definition. So, you have a field containing a primitive nth root of unity that is an assumption. <coughs> a, a Kumar extension of f, so that is is an extension k over f <coughs> such that k is the splitting field of a polynomial ok. So, let me even say irreducible polynomial that comes for free in some sense ok is an extension ok sorry okay, I, I will write them uh, such that k over f is n and k is the splitting field of an irreducible polynomial of the form x power n minus a for some a in f that is all. So, okay, x power. So, these are Kummer extensions. So, Kummer extension remember is f e base must contain a primitive nth root of unity and the extension uh, must be of degree n and it must be obtained by adding an nth root. So, we, we say k is obtained by uh, 
uh, adjoining an nth root okay so we say that k is adjoined by adding an nth root as we will explain because a root of this polynomial is an nth root of a so a is in f so we adjoin an nth root to get that field so then it is an uh, kumar extension so let's quickly look at some examples and our goal in this class is to understand kumar extensions so of course uh, you can take f to be q and n to be 2 okay so then f contains minus 1 which is the primitive second root of unity which is the primitive square root of unity right so that is that is that part of the assumption is satisfied because minus 1 is the primitive nth root of unity second root of unity so then what are you looking for a kumar extension has to be of the form is simply a quadratic extension let's say q adjoined root d over q where d uh, you can take d for example so in fact one can prove that every um, every kumar extension is like this this is something we did in a problem session so it is a quadratic extension like this where d and root d is not in q right if root d is in q of course this is not a quadratic extension so quadratic means degree 2 extension so a kumar extension is simply a quadratic extension because you can always i mean it is of then x square minus d is irreducible right you are adding a square root okay that is first example on the other hand if you take cube root of 2 is not a kumar extension though it is obtained by adding a cube root it is adjoining a cube root but it is not a kumar extension why because q does not contain <coughs> a primitive third root of unity right q does not contain primitive third root of unity the only third roots of unity in complex numbers are omega and omega square neither of them is in q so this assumption here that the field must contain a primitive nth root of unity is not satisfied so this is not a kumar extension these are important extensions such extensions are called radical extensions and they are important to us later when we look at uh, when we study solving polynomials by radicals so i'll come back to this later so these are perfectly good extensions called radical extensions radical extensions are radical extensions are those that are obtained by adjoining a radical or a root of some existing element okay and when we talk about solving polynomials by radicals we are looking to produce that uh, show that the root is contained in a radical extension because then it will be expressed in terms of radicals okay if you remember the first video of the course where i motivated galva theory by uh, explaining what solving polynomials by radicals is now we, with it, with all the knowledge that now we now have it it is tantamount to saying that the root is in a radical extension it need, need not be a single radical extension like this but it can be at the end inside a field which is at the end of a series of radical extensions so all this will be explained in detail later but for for us the order of business today is kumar extensions and this is not a kumar extension because it fails to have q fails to have third root of unity however if you take uh, q adjoint cube root of 2 comma omega over omega is a kumar extension because you have rectified this problem of the base field not containing a primitive 
cube root of unity by adding that and then you are taking a cube root. So, this is a Kummer extension. Okay. So, and finally, let me just give a third example which I will write here. If you take k to be the splitting field of x cubed minus 2 over f7. This came up in a problem session, right? We, we also recall today that f7 does have a primitive cube root of 1, namely 2, also 4. So, and now you are adding cube root of three, uh, 2 to this extension. So, this is a Kummer extension. Okay. So, here of course, 3 is the n that we are interested in, p equals 7. Here the field characteristic does not divide n. So, that is good also. So, this notation here for me means p does not divide n. So, th this sentence short form is that p does not divide n. This refers to the fact that p divides n and when I put a bar, that means it does not divide n. Okay? So, all the conditions are satisfied. I will simply write f7 contains 2 and 4 which are primitive third roots of unity because 2 power 2 is not 1, 2 square which is 4 is not 1, but 2 cubed is 1. This is if in f7 and same thing you can check for 4. 4 is not 1, 4 square which is 16 is not, not 1, but 4 cubed is 1. <coughs> so, Kummer extensions are are useful or interesting by themselves as we will see in a minute <coughs> and further they will be useful to us when we study polynomial equations. So, this is this will come up in a few videos. So, let me write down the theorem that I want to prove today, which completely characterizes um, Kummer extensions. So, <coughs> let f be a field containing a primitive nth root of unity. Let me repeat again, f satisfies our standing assumption which I wrote at the beginning of today's class which is that either characteristic of f is 0 or if the characteristic is not 0 then the characteristic does not divide n. So, we fix a positive integer n. Every time we talk about Kummer extensions we fix a positive integer n. So, let k or f be an extension of degree n. So, k colon f is 1. So, then the following are equivalent. T f a e remembers represents statement that the following are equivalent. So, the first is that k over f is a Kummer extension. So, in other words, um, there exists a in f such that x power n minus a is irreducible and k is the splitting field of that polynomial. Right? This is the definition of a Kummer extension. So, Kummer extension is an extension of degree n and it is the splitting field of an irreducible polynomial x power n minus a. Second statement which is much more Galois theoretic or, uh, or more in the flavor of what we want to do, what we do in this course is that k over f is a cyclic extension. <coughs> Remember that cyclic means that is k over f is Galois. Cyclic represents two facts that k over f is Galois and the Galois group is cyclic. So, in particular what we are saying is that Kummer extensions are cyclic or Galois and their Galois group is cyclic and moreover you give me any 
Galois extension whose Galois group is cyclic, it is a Kummer extension. I, I want to emphasize again that we are assuming that f contains a primitive nth root of unity. So, we want to prove this. Our goal is to prove this theorem and we will do this by essentially proving two different theorems which give the two directions of this theorem. So, the first theorem is the following. So, I, uh, the way I wrote the proof is break up the proof into two different theorems. The first theorem is the following. So, theorem 1. So, the proof of this follows from the following two theorems. So, maybe I will write down those two theorems now and then we will prove them. So, theorem 1, theorem 1 is the following. Um, I, I want to write down the, the full setup just uh, so that we have a record of this. When you just look at this theorem, you know everything. Let f be a field containing a primitive nth root of unity. Now, I will not write any more that uh, it, it satisfies the standing assumption star. It does of course, that is given. Let A be a non-zero element in F. <coughs> Let K be the splitting field of x power n minus A over F. Then two things, one x power n minus A is cyclic, sorry is irreducible. Okay, so okay, maybe I will write it as I have here. Then k over f is a cyclic extension. So, this gives me the one direction of the above theorem and um, the order of the Galois group is n if and only if x power n a is irreducible over a. Okay. So, I am this is <coughs> on the face of it a slightly more general result than what we need. So, maybe before I start the proof, I will also write theorem 2. So, that I have everything on one slide, so that then I can try to. <coughs> okay. So, let n as in as above and let uh, f be a field containing containing a primitive nth root of unity as above. So, capital F and n in this entire class will be standard notation. n is a positive integer, f is a field containing a primitive nth root of unity, either characteristic of f is 0 or its characteristic does not divide n. Okay. So, then let k over f be a cyclic extension <coughs> of degree n. Okay. So, this is the second statement here k over f is a cyclic extension of degree n. Then k is the splitting field of an irreducible polynomial. over f. <coughs> so, that is of course, that means a is in f, it is the polynomial is in f. Okay, so, now I, I cannot show you the full uh, slide in one screen, but to prove now 1 implies 2, we use theorem 1. right? So, basically what I am saying is 1 implies 2 by theorem 1, right? because you are assuming that k is a Kummer extension of f and then you are concluding that it is a cyclic extension. That is exactly 1 over 1 implies 2 and 2 implies 1 in 2 theorem 2 we are taking a primitive sorry we are taking a cyclic extension and concluding that it is a Kummer extension. So, by theorem 2. So, this is the way I want to break up the proof. So, that uh, the, the different results that we are proving are more clear in your head. So, the global theorem about Kummer extensions is that remember this as basically saying that if you start with a field containing a primitive nth root of unity, then an extension of that field is a Kummer extension if and only if 
it is a galva extension with cyclic galva group that is all. So, now may be I will try to prove theorem 1 today and then uh, we will postpone the next theorem to next class. So, proof of theorem 1. Okay. So, what is the proof of theorem 1? Theorem 1 is right here. So, we are given that it is the splitting field of a polynomial of the form x power n minus a and we are also given that f contains a primitive nth root of unity and we are going to prove that um, it is a cyclic extension and that if the degree extent, degree of the extension is n if and only if it is an irreducible x power n minus a is an irreducible polynomial. Okay. So, now let us start with the proof let alpha in k be a root of x power n minus a. Remember in the theorem k is the splitting field of x power n minus a. So, it x power n minus a com contains all the roots of that polynomial. So, let us take one of them. Okay. So, if k equal to f we are done right because k over f is of course galva and cyclic right. So, in fact let me write cyclic it is cyclic and uh, galva group is not I mean the second statement does not quite apply because that we will come to in a minute I mean here we are taking x power 1 minus a basically. So, if this is done we are ok. So, we assume k is not equal to f and alpha is not equal alpha is not in f because k is generated by the roots of the polynomial right k is generated by the roots of the polynomial x power n minus a. So, if all the roots are in f then k is equal to f in which case we are done. So, we are assuming that there is a root that is not in f and we are also given that f contains a primitive nth root of unity. Let us take one of them. So, primitive nth root of 1 is zeta. Okay. So, now observe that zeta power i alpha are the roots of of f in k. In fact, are all the roots of <coughs> right because alpha power n equals a that means zeta alpha which of course is in k. So, alpha is in k zeta is in f. So, zeta alpha is in k. So, and this is zeta n alpha n which will continue to be a because zeta n is 1. So, the roots of f are alpha zeta alpha zeta square alpha and zeta n minus 1 alpha and there are n distinct ones because zeta is a primitive nth root of unity and in fact, we know also that uh, this polynomial by the assumption of the characteristic of f is separable. So, actually we, we definitely know that k over f is a Galois extension right. This is because k is normal since it is a splitting field of of an irreducible polynomial sorry of an of a polynomial over f and alpha in k is separable over this is because the last statement is because f which is x n minus 1 is separable by the standing assumption namely the characteristic is either 0 or the characteristic does not divide n. If the characteristic is non 0 the f prime is non 0. So, f prime is non 0 and there is only 0 as the root because f prime is n x n minus 1. So, only root of f prime is 0, but 0 is certainly not a root of f. So, f and f prime have no common roots. So, I will just record that here f prime is n x n minus 1 and it is not 0. So, 0 is the only root of f prime which is not a root and 
and 0 is not a root of so 0 is not a root of f and uh, hence f and f prime have no common root so it is separable so alpha is separable and hence k which is f alpha is separable. So, this is a property of separable extensions. So, if alpha is separable every polynomial in alpha is separable. So, this is a separable extension and it is normal. So, k over f is Galois. It remains to show that Galois group is cyclic. Okay. So, that is what remains to show and that is what I am now to going to show. Because remember the first part of the theorem is to show that k over f is a cyclic extension which is to say it is Galois plus Galois group is cyclic that it is Galois is clear right. So, that we have just shown. So, next step is to show that the Galois group is cyclic. So, it is already 30 minutes. So, let us stop now and we will continue with the proof in the next video and then we will also prove the second theorem. Thank you.